Hello and howdy hi everybody. Mike here from Plain Song Farm. It is April 1st, 2020. Hope everyone is staying as healthy as they can, as sane as they can, connected to others and finding ways that they can continue to serve their community. Today, it is a little quiet here at the farm because we are all quarantined like everybody else. So. I wanted to take you on a tour just to give you a sense of what we're doing here at the farm during this time. Show you some different plots like the hoop house, the greenhouse, some of the fields, our wheat field that's starting to grow up, and maybe some fun extra stuff. So here we go. Hey everyone, welcome to the greenhouse. Uh, you can see here behind me we have our greenhouse or our propagation house where we start all our seeds and seedlings. And then even over here, you can see another hoop house structure behind me. We have some plastic that we need to put on top this year. We'll be growing some cucumbers and sweet bell peppers in there. But let's go into the greenhouse and give you a quick tour. All right, so we're gonna walk into the hoop house here. This hoop house is a 30 by 48 unheated structure that sits in the front yard at Plainsong Farm. Uh, we have a beautiful property here, but one thing we don't have as much of is flat ground. So I'll show you real here without moving too quick. There is the road, very close. So if you hear any cars, that's what that's about. But this is kind of a nice spectacle for everyone to drive by and see. And you can kind of see things are all nice and neat in here. And we have a few things going. We have some carrots that we just planted the other day. And what we're going to do is grow these carrots early spring and then we're going to interplant tomatoes. So you can see here, see down here I have some drip tape. This is down to water those carrots. And we use permanent beds, uh, no-till method, and in the middle here, uh, that's where we're gonna plant our tomatoes um, later this spring. So my thought was grow some early carrots, put in some tomatoes in the middle while those carrots are still getting ready, and we'll see how we go, we'll see how that goes. Uh, along with that, we're also doing some fun stuff in the pathways of how we're gonna mulch and keep these things nice and clean. So we have some wood chips in that pathway. I've also planted things like buckwheat, um, red clover, some oats, just to see what that would do. Here at the farm, we try to employ regenerative practices, which really means we need to have green things growing, photosynthesizing, capturing that carbon in the air and putting it in the soil. So anytime that we can grow stuff, uh, that is better. All right, everyone. So moving on from the hoop house, we're gonna make our way to the fields. Let's see what we can capture here. Here's the fun welcome center. Thank you, Andrew, last year for and Tyler helping to build that. Uh, some of our fellows and summer staff. That's a nice addition. 
Walking by the house here. We're also walking by the walk-in cooler. That's where we keep all the crops nice and cool during the summer months. It's actually an old Kogel's meat truck, which I think is awesome. All right, so we're at the fields. This is our front field where we grow much of our produce, a lot of the annual veggies that go in our CSA shares to members and neighbors. Uh, you can see it all behind me. Probably what you see is a lot of black tarps or even landscape fabric. That's something I always get questions about. People even stop, <laughs> pull into the driveway and ask, what are those big black things on the field and what are you doing? It's a little confusing, but it is something, if I'm getting the name right, uh, it's referred to as occultation. It's really just using a tarp to smother anything underneath. So if you've ever left a tarp in your yard and killed all the grass underneath, that's essentially the same concept. We put them on to kill all the weeds. It's also just a nice pause button. So we cover it with a tarp and that saves us some time if we can't get to it with planting a crop in there or putting a cover crop on. Again, this is kind of one of those short-term solutions to a long-term goal. I'd rather there be a nice cover crop of rye or oats and peas growing so we can just keep that photosynthesis going, capturing that carbon. Having living roots in the soil is always preferable. But in the meantime, as we're dealing with things like quack grass and thistle and all those nasty things, sometimes those, car those tarps come in handy. So we'll keep walking here, see what we can find. One thing that's popping up, like I said, this is being filmed beginning of April. We'll come down here, if you can see, we have the rhubarb popping up. I always love when this comes up. We have to do something with these beds. Some more perennial beds. And obviously you can see we have not done a good job weeding with them. I always love when this rhubarb comes up. It's got this crazy looking color to it and shape. And then as these leaves unfold. So this is an early crop. We have rhubarb here. And over here, you won't be able to see it other than all the grass and weeds. But we do have asparagus in that bed too. So see, those are some of these perennial crops that are a little bit earlier that are popping up in the springtime. So it's always fun to see as the grass is starting to green, you see some of those uh, other things shooting up and bringing forth life. All right, we'll keep moving on from the rhubarb and the asparagus to another thing that was planted last fall that's popping up. Hopefully you can see it down here. I'll zoom it in. We have a few beds here of garlic. The joy. Some of my favorite crop. So that is popping forth. Nice and green. And this has kind of been an experiment that I've done. Not a big one, but just something fun. You can see here, we have straw in one of the beds. And then this other bed, we have landscape fabric. And then in this final bed here, we have hardwood uh, bark mulch. So I've just mulched these three different beds three different ways, just to see if it makes a difference, just to see if I prefer one of the other, keeping track of how much each cost, uh, how long it takes me to actually put that mulch or landscape fabric on that bed, seeing if it makes a difference for the growth of the garlic. And then from there, um, Maybe we'll pick one or just experiment some more. I think if it's fun. We're a production farm, but we do a lot of educational things too. 
I just like to experiment if I can so I can share that information with other people just to give them a sense of what we're doing and maybe be able to offer that experimentation piece that other people are afraid to take the risk with. All right, we're gonna keep making our way to the backfield. You can see behind me, that's something I'm more excited about, all that green, not, well, it is kind of grass. That is a rye cover crop. That's more what I'm interested in if I can, is getting, like I said, that green growth and those living roots in the soil. So those are beds we've actually kind of put out of commission this year, but due to current circumstances, we actually might look into putting them back into production just because we might be in a stage where we want to grow as much food as humanly possible just so we can feed our community and make sure those who don't have access to it can get access to it. So we will see. I need to do a lot of amending to those and get those back in shape. But that's something that we might be looking to do as well. Again, this is some of the backfield, like the one we just passed with the rye we've taken out of commission, but we might put it back in. This might be one that we'll actually be adding some infrastructure to, maybe some more caterpillar tunnels or another hoop house, something like that. It's a little bit flatter than our front field, so I feel more comfortable putting in some of those buildings there. Although it's further from the house, but uh, who minds walking in the snow in Michigan winters, right? All right, so here we come to the wheat field. And here at Plain Song Farm, we have an heirloom wheat program where we grow turkey red wheat. We hand plant that, hand harvest that with our community. And then we have different churches and congregations throughout Michigan uh, purchase that, that, um, that flower and they take it back and they use that for their communion bread. So it's an awesome program we're really excited to have. And you can see here all that luscious green that's popping up from the hard work. The people last year, we planted this last September. So it's all coming up nicely. A decent amount of weeds in there. So once things dry up a little bit, hopefully I can get in there and tackle that a little bit so the harvest is a little bit easier. All right, everybody, we'll wrap up the tour there. So that's all from me here at Plain Sung Farm. I think we'll end this thing with a few money shots, maybe some of the weather we've been experiencing this spring, as well as just some things that have captured our eye. But in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll update you soon.